I can imagine that we see a wide range of different technologies and different uh, warehousing types uh, in the future, and not the one solution that fits all. If you ask people in the street what way they think about when they uh, think about the term warehousing, they probably tell you something about long ales uh, with huge pallet racks where some forklifts uh, go through in a slow pace. But um, yeah, these images of warehouses have nothing to do with uh, actual e-commerce warehouses nowadays because uh, yeah, they are bustling spaces uh, like an anthill with a lot of people and a lot of technology and um, every single process step is closely monitored and optimized and supported with technology. So um, yeah, there was a huge development in the last uh, decade. Yeah, we see a concentration process um, that more and more sales uh, concentrate on a few global players and uh, furthermore, even smaller uh, online retailers, they uh, utilize the services of these giants uh, fulfilled by Amazon, some, something like that. And uh, obviously, this increases the size of the warehouses and with size there comes uh, economies of scale and then you can afford even more technology more robots more automated racks so that this consolidation process has led to a huge uh, increase in in warehouse automation in the past uh, decade Yeah, in the past it was order picking you you went by with your forklift drove to uh, a specific pallet in the pallet rack and then obtained the stuff but uh, e-commerce sales is, is special on the one hand you have a huge assortment to typically um, because um, even if you do not sell stuff very often it doesn't consume a lot of uh, space in a remote warehouse so e-commerce tends to have a much larger assortment than uh, store-based retail. And on the other hand, uh, customer households just order a few items. Typ the typical order size at Amazon, for instance, Germany is just 1.6 items per order. And this combination on the one hand, a uh, huge assortment, and on the other hand, uh, small orders, it's very, very hard to predict what is ordered together. In the former warehouse, you could put stuff that was frequently ordered together close by so that you don't have to walk long. But if you cannot predict it and have such a huge assortment, um, and what they do is to apply something that is called scattered or mixed shelf storage, that they no longer put a complete pallet of items into a shelf, but they break up the pallets and individualize the items and put an item, one here, one there. They spread it all over the warehouse and now it doesn't matter any longer what the customers order together. Somewhere in your huge warehouse, you will have the stuff that is ordered close by so that the picker mustn't walk long. And this is their strategy, how to, to cope with this special order structure of e-commerce. One method uh, to, to organize uh, the processes and, and um, Inventory is the scattered storage. This is uh, basically suited if you have a pickers to part process where you have a human workforce that, that runs through the warehouse. But uh, there are other processes, um, parts to picker processes, which are more automated. This is the other kind of strategy. Uh, for instance, there are these uh, small robots. Amazon applies these Kiva robots, which drive directly under a rack lift the rack and bring it to a picker so that they can concentrate uh, on the picking process and, and need not walk through the warehouse. And uh, this is the, then very uh, convenient and, and efficient for order picking. So there are a lot of ideas, organizational ones and technological solutions to, to cope with uh, the special structure of e-commerce. Yeah, you know, that's a simple question because that's what they earn money for. Um, they are retailers, so they are dependent on products of other people. So it's hard to differentiate your business with, with the products. You're just a retailer. 
So what they earn their money for is a nice web shop. And the other thing is logistics. And um, how do you get the stuff fast and efficient and reliable to the customers? You have just two steps uh, where you can improve your business. That's warehousing. And the other is the last mile when you deliver the stuff, the parcels to the customers. And obviously both is very important. So um, it's always a good idea for an e-commerce retailer to uh, yeah, put a lot of effort into very efficient uh, e-commerce processes in your distribution centers. Yeah, that's the second step where e-commerce can improve bringing uh, the stuff to the customers. And at the moment, it's uh, the delivery person with a van. And this costs a lot of money because uh, personnel is very expensive, especially in, in the industrialized countries where you have an aging society and the harsh working conditions and parcel delivery doesn't make it easy to, to find enough uh, staff. So um, yeah, once uh, autonomous driving is realized, one main application will be uh, delivery on the last mile, not only for, for people, but also for goods. And I can imagine that drones might be complicated because of uh, safety issues. We want to avoid that a lot of drones fall on our heads, but um, either it will be uh, small, uh, autonomous robots which drive over the sidewalk at a low pace that's not very uh, dangerous um, for individual parcels or another idea is uh, mobile parcel lockers where a lot of parcels are stored into an uh, autonomous vehicle and uh, once it is parked on uh, the sidewalk you get a notification on your smartphone that the parcel locker is in front of your door and then you walk down and unlock the compartment uh, with um, your mobile phone. Uh, I can imagine that this will be the solutions of the future because um, yeah, it will be harder and harder to, to find enough people to deliver all the stuff we are ordering online. Yeah, and, and people expect that it's delivered even faster and faster. So um, there is a, is a huge uh, desire for new and fast and cost efficient solutions. we see a trend to, to autonomous robots because this is the more flexible solution. If you have automated racks and conveyors, they are fixedly installed and it's hard uh, to, to alter such a system on short notice when you expect uh, much higher sales on, on before Christmas. Um, but with uh, autonomous robots, it's uh, they are much better scalable because you can just add robots or leave them at the side if you don't do not need them. And especially if these robots are small and standardized, they are not that costly. Um, so yeah, um, flexibility is another driver for uh, technology, but a different kind of technology, not huge system fixedly installed, but flexible uh, solutions which can be adapted uh, to different situations.